We have uh, Mario Laplan uh, comments. Uh, Mario Laplan, uh, Professor Mario Laplan, is a professor of economics of the Institute of Economics at Unica. And uh, he is uh, presently uh, the president of CGE, you know, uh, mm -hmm. as far as I know, no, which is the strategic, <laughs> strategic Studies and Management Center, which belongs to the Ministry of Science and Technology Innovation. So he has a, also a very important place. And I think uh, he can also make some comments. I think Nix made some comments uh, related to Brazil. It was very good because uh, we could see a kind of comparison between uh, United States science and technology policy and the Brazilian science and technology policy or innovation policy. And uh, I hope uh, that uh, we can expect some comments also of uh, Mario Laplan uh, about uh, the Brazilian science and technology policy. Okay. Let me first um, thanks, say thanks to the PENSYS program for inviting me. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be back here at Unicamp. Um, and of course, also thanks Professor Bonvillant for his very inspiring presentation. Um, it's always amazing when you compare the US and Brazil how to, to, to realize how striking the similarities and differences are. It's, uh, I will make just four very brief comments um, from what I gather are the most uh, uh, relevant comparisons you can uh, bring uh, out of your presentation about Brazil and the US. First, I, I like very much this, this metaphor you used of going west, moving west, and having uh, some difficulties going back east. So um, if I had to bring that metaphor, metaphor to, to Brazil, uh, it's not very easy to see what, what would be west and what was east in Brazil. I'm not, I'm not thinking in geographical terms because east is the coast and west is inland. But beyond that, beyond that, I think that our east in Brazilian history um, is something like a, a country uh, still uh, strongly rural. With, a very, with very strong uh, memories, <laughs> not only memories, but uh, evidences of its uh, a slave-based economy. Huh? And uh, highly concentrated near the coast. Huh? Rio, Bahia. And what was West then? West was moving away from this past. Yeah. So I would say that West in Brazil was industrialization. Moving West in Brazil meant moving away from that country, rural country, slave economy, highly concentrated plantation economy, sugar plantation economy, to uh, urban and industrialized and hopefully democratic society. What actually happened is in Brazil is that we move west without leaving east. Because we industrialized, we urbanized, we distributed somehow in a different way our population and our economy, then Sao Paulo emerged. But we carry on, we carried on in our wagons, we carried on inequality, social exclusion, and a very weak, as we can see today, democracy, democratic institutions. So we still have to move west in that sense. We haven't gone the full distance to the west. 
So that I found your, your metaphor very, very interesting. Um, um, my second comment would be about related to this very sharp perception you had, you, you, you brought us, on what's different in legacy sectors. Right? And you went beyond telling us that uh, in these sectors, the innovation process is much more complex. It is, but you went beyond that. You, you mentioned, uh, you, you defined these sectors as occupied territories. Um, and I found that another metaphor, very, <laughs> these people jumping in parachutes <laughs> on, wind, on, on, on legacy sectors, I found that very, very creative. Um, so what you're saying when you, when you refer to occupied territories is that these are territories in which vested interests, market power, market entry barriers are very strong. So innovation has to find a way to break through all these barriers, to, to find a way to go around vested interests to bring about change. Well, we used to think about innovation as a process through which you change things. You eventually create new markets. And maybe creating a new market is easier than restructuring an existing one. Yeah, this, uh, if I got your message, that, that was the, the, the core of what you were saying. And there are two ways, I think. If you think about what are the, the pathways for change in, in, a, in a structured, highly structured market, uh, there are two ways you can think of. First, competition. A new competitor or an old competitor having a new strategy can break the structure, restructure the market. This is, for instance, what the Japanese did in the 70s when they broke into the oligopoly of the car industry. This is what the Japanese did in the 70s, 80s, when they succeeded in breaking the barriers in the electronics industry. And later on, the Koreans. And later on, the Chinese. So competition, in a very Schumpeterian metaphor, it's one way to restructure a market. You just break it down. Uh, this Schumpeter called uh, uh, creative uh, destruction. Uh, that's one way. Uh, it's not always easy. It depends on the circumstances. Someone has to be willing to risk this strategy. Because I just mentioned some success stories, but there are many failure stories. But there must, there must be another way. In fact, there is another way, which is what you're pointing out as the way in which the occupied territory of manufacturing in the US could be restructured. This, instead of emphasizing competition this way, emphasizes cooperation, coordination. That's uh, much more complex. Because coordination, cooperation among highly uh, different actors with different interests is not something you can just bring about by decree. It's, some, it's, it's the outcome of social interaction. It's cumbersome, it's difficult, it takes time and some luck. And um, if you want to bring together uh, government agencies, business, uh, and product producers and their suppliers, and service suppliers, and uh, the scientific and technological community, uh, you have to think of a process or, or mechanism that can make this happen, and this takes time. This takes uh, leadership. This, this takes institution building, institutional innovation. So it's a challenge. It's a challenge. But it has been done. It has been done in some cases. In the US, for instance, uh, in the defense sector, DARPA has made this happen. Not only DARPA, but DARPA was the learning organization that filled the gap. So it can be done. The question is, can it be done in Brazil? Well, and 
with this question, I come to my third comment. Uh, there are some differences between the US and Brazil that we must take into account if, the, if we don't want to just imitate things that work somewhere else but might not work here. And um, while you were describing this process in the manufacturing, in the American manufacturing that took the US from a uh, stage where it, there was innovation and production in Brazil, they innovate and produce here, to another a second stage where things changed and it was still innovate here but produce, produce elsewhere, mostly in Asia, uh, and then you, 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 you said uh, the U.S. manufacturing risks going to a third stage where you innovate and produce elsewhere. Uh, I notice a, a very important difference with our experience in Brazil. Because of the way Brazil industrialized, because we never completely moved to the West, we stayed, we remained also in the East, there's some difference here. Uh, we, we, never, we never had the uh, first stage you mentioned. From the beginning, in, the, in Brazil, it was innovate elsewhere and produce here. Most of, our, our, of the most difficult stages of our industrialization were done with foreign direct investment. It was a shortcut. We, we did a very rapid, in a few decades, we industrialized this country, bringing technology, bringing knowledge, bringing capabilities developed elsewhere by multinational companies. But they produce here. That had a huge impact on our urbanization, on the structure and shape of our market, the uh, labor market. Uh, but uh, we never had this first stage. And with a small number of good examples, um, we moved straight to, the, to another stage where we now innovate elsewhere, as we always did, but we, in the last 15 years, also start producing elsewhere. Even Brazilian companies are producing in China, in legacy sectors. The apparel industry, most of the Brazilian companies produce elsewhere, in the Caribbean or in China. So this is something we have to take uh, into account. Because the gaps we need to fill are not the same gaps that the US, US manufacturing had to fill. What I'm trying to say is that, in fact, we are not in a situation where we need to find ways to restore a full-fledged innovation system, as might be the case in the US. Our starting point, actually, is different. We do have some local or sectoral innovation systems in highly innovative environments, but local sectoral, not a full-fledged manufacturing innovation system. So what our problem right now is to find ways to strengthen these systems. First, like the ethanol system, the second generation ethanol system, and other systems we have in airspace, and others, nuclear technology, nuclear energy. Uh, but beyond that, what we need, actually need, our challenge is how can we learn from these success cases to bring new local and sectoral systems uh, to work. Uh, we did, as uh, Andrea just asked me to make some comments on, on, on our policy here. Huh? That would take too long. <laughs> Maybe it's not even the right moment to do this. But um, we do have some recent experiences that give me some hope that this learning process is going on. Not, maybe not at the right pace, but still moving ahead. And um, even in the dimension in which Brazil has always faced strong difficulties, institutional learning. Um, we did build, in the recent past, this sort of learning organizations. Hmm? Not DARPA, <laughs> but uh, let me mention two. 
Maybe, maybe one would be enough. Embrapi. Embrapi is, a, a, is an institutional innovation that aims to improve the way research institutions and uh, businesses come together to solve engineering problems. Um, and what's more uh, interesting about it is that unlike other examples in Brazilian industrialization history, it attempts to build up cooperation and, and build trust. Um, so the funding is coordinated. It has some funds from the federal government, funds from the local institution, and also from business. In our environment, this is not very common because uh, the way things usually happen here is that all the risk and all the funding <laughs> comes from public institutions and uh, our business are usually very shy in, in, in putting themselves at risk, technological and market risk. So this is one. If I were to, to mention a second institution, uh, I would mention the institution I'm working for now. But that will be a lack of modesty, so I won't do that. But I, I do think we, we are a learning institution. Uh, maybe some, some other time I can <laughs> tell you exactly why or give you some arguments, some, some reasons to support that, that, that my view. Uh, in my, 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 going to my, my last uh, comment, um, I think that since we don't have a, 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 a full-fledged system that used to work and is not working now and needs to be restored, <laughs> our problem is slightly different. We, we, we are still in the process of building a system and we don't have the resources, we don't have the, the capabilities, we don't even have the time to plan to build the whole system. My, my, in my view, we will go on for a while still building some nodes, some uh, sectoral local um, parts of the whole system. So what we need to find is the right attractors, the right issues that can bring together all these highly different actors start a process of social interaction that hopefully will end up bringing cooperation. And going back to my first point, I think we should do this trying to keep moving west, leaving our past in the east behind. I'm sure that we will find good, strong attractors linking innovation and the restructuring of our existing economy to societal needs. Because beyond the complexities of driving social interaction, restructuring our economy is going to require a huge amount of resources. It will be very expensive. Doing science, technology, and innovating in an economy that already has a certain degree of development as, as ours, will not come easily and will not be cheap. So we will need very strong support from society to make this happen. It, we, it won't work if the only motivation for this is to increase the competitiveness of our economy. That won't do it. We must show to our people that this will improve their living conditions. This will bring them better health, better housing, better transportation, better education, less violence, more secure urban environments, and less inequality. These are the best attractors we can think of. And we should drive all our energy all our money, all our time, into building these attractors to bring the restructuring of our economy, manufacturing, but also services in that direction. So 
Once again, thank you very much, uh, Professor, for your inspiring presentation. It's a pleasure to, to be able to, to make these few comments. Uh, thank you, Mariano, for this uh, instigating comments also. Uh, they show that there are some uh, similarity, but a very large difference between uh, Brazil and US. But this metaphor, it was very interesting because our East and West, no? uh, and really Brazil have a, a strong East. No? Uh, uh, the heavy weight of this East is very impressive and is, uh, provokes a strong problems in our society.